VR의 마스터 아카데미 레스 브라운의 VR 에, 영상입니다. 아, 에피소드 1 is possible 내용입니다. 함께 하시죠. 자 소리로만 듣게 되어서 안타깝긴 하지만 예 함께 합니다. 자 다시 처음부터 하겠습니다. You have something special. You have greatness in you. I want to serve notice to you. Life is hard. Life is hard. It's hard. It's hard to keep going when you've been rejected again and again and again. It's hard when something happens to someone that you love. They said over every year, at least three tragedies are going to take place in each person's life. Something's going to happen to you or something's going to happen to someone you care about. It was hard for me going through a divorce from someone that I love very much to keep on keeping on. It was hard for me losing my best friend who was waiting on a liver transplant. It was hard for me to come out in public when I had a nationally syndicated talk show and it was canceled. It was hard for me when I went to a doctor and he said, Mr. Brown, mm, I've got something I want to tell you. I said, what is it? He had prostate cancer. Cancer is... is, is It's, it's a very fearful word uh, in, in seven different languages. It's the most feared word. And I said, how bad is it? He said, well, your PSA, which stands for prostate-specific antigen, is 2,400. I said, what's normal? He said, one to four. I said, wow. He said, and it's metastasized in seven different areas. I said, whoa. He said, why are you smiling? I said, man, seven is my lucky number. I'm one of seven children. I, I was born February the 17th. Uh, Joshua marched around the walls of Jericho seven times. Naaman dipped himself in the river Jordan seven times. Seven is my lucky number. He looked at his nurse and said, he's strange. <laughs> I said, can you give me a second opinion? He said, yes. I said, what is it, Dr. Golson? He said, you're ugly, too. I said, oh, my God, you didn't go there. You didn't just call me ugly. Oh, my God, <laughs> I can't believe it. He said, but you got this. We determine the diagnosis. You and God determines the prognosis. You got this. And, and, and it reminded me how people live their lives as a result of the story they believe about themselves. He interrupted my story that this is not a death sentence. I left there not with a heart full of fear, but a heart full of faith. You know, Zig Ziglar said something about fear. He said that the majority of people, when fear shows up, they forget everything and run. But there's a small number. And I believe that's you. You're in this number. They face everything and rise. And so life is hard. It's easy to give up. It's easy to buy into the negatives. It's easy to quit on yourself and your dream and your family. It's hard to keep on keeping on. 
you can do hard. I can't believe that this is me. You can do hard. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Push yourself. Stretch yourself. Make your move before you're ready. Because when you're willing to bet on you, when you're willing to challenge yourself and stretch yourself, you discover a part of yourself that you never discover in your comfort zone. You will feel your way to success. It's hard. Walt Disney filed bankruptcy seven times. And he had two nervous breakdowns. But he kept going in pursuit of his dreams. And we now celebrate in the places that he had this vision and dream that he got invest investors and many poor people told him, oh, you would never be able to do that work. But he kept going. You've had things that people tried to discourage you from doing. And, and many times you might have discouraged yourself. You don't know yourself well enough to be a cynic. You've got greatness in you. And when you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what your limits are. So you act like you don't have any. John H. Johnson, with a loan of $500, built a $400 million empire. He got a $500 loan from his mother. And he had people around him saying, you will never be able to, to create Ebony Magazine, a jet magazine. He fired his best friend. And people ask him, why did you fire your best friend? He said, I didn't believe that I could do what I was pursuing. I didn't need anybody on my payroll to tell me that. See, sometimes we've got to step out of line. Sometimes that we've got to recognize that we've been indoctrinated with being logical and being practical and, and being realistic. There's a reason the book of life says, lean not unto thine own understanding. There are some things that you can do that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you if you decide to do the hard stuff. And you can do hard. One of the things I strongly believe when you face the rejections of life, I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. <laughs> it's you. You can do hard. It was hard. Picking myself up. Dealing with the embarrassment. How can I teach people how to live their dreams? And I couldn't make my marriage work. How, how can I go on with my life and and the major inspiration in my life, my mother, she died. My reason for being, I didn't think I would be able to maintain my sanity. I remember my mother saying, Leslie, yes, ma'am, mama, boy, you're going to be all right. It was hard. There are things that's going to happen to you. I'll never forget when I lost the first home that I purchased for my mother, that was a, a childhood dream of buying mama a house. She worked on Miami Beach for wealthy families. She cooked for these families, and, and we ate the food left over from the families that she cooked for. She kept their children, and we wore their hand-me-down clothes. And I got into position when I became an adult to buy her a home, and I didn't do a title search. I didn't know what I didn't know. And we had to get out of that place. We went through foreclosure. It was humiliating. It was embarrassing. I felt defeated. I remember standing behind the truck, unloading the truck, and I was crying. And the, and the neighbors were saying, Mamie, you're back? Yes. Leslie lost a house because of a mistake. I had my head down and I was crying. And and I felt defeated, and Mama said, Leslie, yes, ma'am, Mama. She said, hold your head up, boy. I said, Mama, I can't. I feel so sad. I'm so sorry I did this to you. She said, hold your head up. You have nothing to be ashamed of. We still have each other. Wow. That was tough. It was hard. But we still had each other. Here's what I'm saying about 
your life right now. You might have lost your job. You might have gone through a foreclosure or an eviction. You, you might have gone through a divorce. It's hard coming back, picking up the pieces, gathering your wits about yourself. And keep on going. Here's an affirmation I want you to say to yourself. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. No matter how bad it I'm is going or how to make bad it. it gets, I'm going to make it. There's a quote that I love that says, many times in life, we'll be faced with a series of God-ordained opportunities, brilliantly disguised as problems and challenges. If you're going through some stuff right now, I know it's hard, but see it as a God-ordained opportunity because you have something special. You have greatness in you. You have the power to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You have something special.